Hello everybody, this is Dr. August D. Oliveira. How are you guys doing? I'm with the website Digital Enamel and over the next few videos I'm going to be covering a really cool program called ExoCAD. Um, if you've seen my stuff on Facebook or on Digital Enamel you may notice that lately I've been playing a lot with 3D printing. Now 3D printing in dentistry is super hot and it's definitely the wave of the future but unfortunately there's really not a lot of software that you can use to get something 3D printed. Um, so if you've seen some of my videos, you may have seen me use a software called Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is an awesome program. It's free and you can do a ton with it. However, it's not very dental. So to make a night guard or to make a model or to make a temporary, you've got to jump through a lot of hoops. So in comes ExoCAD for the rescue. You. ExoCAD is designed for dental labs. So if you're a dentist and you want to get, let's say, a temporary crown on number 30, um, there are some bells and whistles that you don't need in the software. So let's just kind of go over the basic opening screen um, or treatment planning screen. Um, it's going to ask you for the patient's name, tooth number, type of restoration, and what sort of design you want. You're on the screen. Um, the client or the technician boxes, you can just set as default. Obviously, if you have maybe a multi-doctor office, you can change this to different names of each doctor. In the patient name, I'm just going to put my own name. All right, so the next thing is to select the tooth that we're working on. And I'm going to tell you that um, ExoCAD is probably not the most streamlined program on the market. Uh, when we use programs like CIREC, they're pretty smart. They sort of know, hey, if I have a tooth and I'm taking an opposing uh, arch, and if I have adjacent teeth next to my restoration, they take all that into consideration. Unfortunately, in ExoCAD, you really have to define a lot of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and go through um, setting up what we call a Geller model. Now a Geller model is simply a 3D model with removable dies. Um, you don't even need an articulator for this type of model. There's sort of elements that hold the two models together and the dies actually pop out from underneath. So it's pretty cool. In subsequent videos, I'll go over how to do a hybrid, how to do a temporary crown, how to do a night guard, and some of the other things. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and generate a model with removable dies. So in this case here, we've got a uh, type knot that we're going to be working with, with a bridge from 18 through 20, and uh, tooth number 30. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click on number 30. And after we click on number 30, we're presented with a material configuration and design window. Um, as you can see here, there is a lot of stuff that we would just never ever need. So I'm not going to be doing, you know, an offset coping, or I'm never going to do a pressed pontic, um, and certainly not going to do my own bars or telescopic crowns. So there's a lot of stuff we don't need. Um, but what I'm going to do on number 30 and 18 through 19 is make a plan for a printed temporary. So let's go ahead and start with number 30. We're going to uh, uh, treatment plan for an anatomic crown. The designation there is really um, are we making a monolithic crown restoration or are we going to be doing a cutback? Um, Preformed crowns and provisional crowns are sort of like um, what you had back in dental school in the big old box of teeth, um, basically something that you would reline. So we'll click on anatomic crown. Um, it asks you for a material. Um, since we're not milling these, you can really select almost anything on there. Now, um, I usually just select composite, and you might notice under material it says 5-axis laser or 3D print. Um, over on the right, for this case, we're not going to mess with anything. However, if you wanted to do an implant restoration, you would select anatomic crown as a monolithic. Um, and uh, within this, you would select the type of implant restoration. Would you want a custom abutment or a screw retained crown? But in this case, we're not doing an implant 
One thing that's really cool is you can design gingiva separately on your restorations, which definitely comes in handy when we do hybrids, but we're not going to get into that right now. So we just go okay. ahead. Hey. So what we have to do now is tell the computer what are the adjacent restorations. Um, also over here on this side too, we'll tell it for a bridge. So let's go ahead and do it for a bridge. So number 18, we're going to call an anatomic crown. Same deal, composite. Number 19, we're going to call that an anatomic pontic. And number 20, an anatomic crown as well. So now that we have the restorations done, we have to give a little bit more information. We have to tell the software that we're going to be doing an antagonist. Um, so we have an opposing arch, so we just click any tooth on the upper arch and click antagonist. Next, and I think this is a really dumb thing that we have to do, we have to tell basically what our uh, adjacent teeth are. So number 31, adjacent tooth number 29, adjacent tooth. I believe the Typodont has 17 on it and 21. Alright, so all now right. we're all set up on this end. You may notice on the right hand side the good stuff that we want to get into is grayed out. Uh, we have to now tell the software how are these in occlusion. And if you come into scan mode, you may notice we've got some uh, cool options. So if you don't have an opposing, obviously one stone model, um, two stone models in occlusion is going to be pretty much my default. Um, if you do happen to have a adjustable, a semi-adjustable articulator, you can definitely put all that stuff in. If you're scanning an impression in a lab-based scanner, you can also put that information. So in this case here, we're going to select two stone models in occlusion. You may notice too, I put that and why can't I go forward? Well, believe it or not, you have to hit the Save button. Um, I don't know why they don't automatically do that, but you have to. So now we have the actions off to the side. Now, if you happen to have a chairside scanner that was compatible with ExoCAD or a lab-based scanner, you could then scan directly into ExoCAD. Design is what we're going to cover later on. This is where we actually design our uh, bridge or our single unit temporary manufacturer. Obviously, you could send that to a CAM program that would work with a mill. But in this case here, we're going to go into Model Creator. So if we click on Model Creator, it'll automatically open up something else, uh, another software that we'll um, cover in a little bit.